The Magello Journal continues with PB28, Cobalt Turquoise Blue. No, wait, Cobalt Turquoise Hue. Why are they calling this a hue? Well, I think it's because PB28 is technically Cobalt Aluminum Oxide, which is commonly known as Cobalt Blue. Hi, I'm Irene. In this series, each session features a color from Magello Mission Gold's Pure Pigment Set. I swatch, mix, paint, and talk about related things, and sometimes unrelated things. Hey, the visuals often speak for themselves, so I may as well use the opportunity to get things off my chest. Is that so wrong? By the way, the journal here is from the B, that's B-E-E, -E, paper company. While this particular style is no longer available, there are other 100% cotton watercolor sketchbooks out there from Hanamola, Paul Rubens, Arches, and others. Now, Magello has multiple Mission Gold sets available, and it can be confusing figuring out which one would best suit you. Thankfully, Miranda Watson at Alkali Creek Art recently posted a video that talks about the differences between several of those sets. She does a great job of showing the colors in swatches and pointing out which are duplicated. So if that interests you, check it out. A link is in the description. This color, cobalt turquoise hue, makes me think of water. Uh, not just any water, but bodies of water. Ponds, lakes, rivers, seas, oceans. I feel fortunate to live near the coast, even if I don't get to the water as much as I like. I have fond childhood memories of accompanying my mother to the beach where she dug for clams. I even had a garden trowel so I could play at foraging too. I usually ended up with a few donated clams rattling around in my toy pail while mom lugged around two full buckets. There must not have been limitations back then. When I say beach, keep in mind that I'm talking about the Pacific Northwest. Our beaches aren't the barefoot or flip-flop sort, but rather the hiking shoes or rubber boots sort. In fact, linked in the description, there's a classic Henry Weinhard's commercial that gives a perfect representation. Check it out for a chuckle. Speaking of vague memories, I know I've been on a ferry at some point, but I can only recall bits and pieces, so I'd love to do it again. Perhaps to visit Whidbey Island or Bainbridge Island. It's been about seven years or so since I was last on Bainbridge Island. I was with relatives at the time, and we'd taken the long way around to enjoy the scenery. Once you cross the bridge, it's only a short ways to the Bloedel Reserve, consisting of 150 acres of nature preserve and botanical gardens. There was lots to enjoy there, but what I remember most are the Japanese garden, the rhododendron glen, the reflection pool, and the trestle bridge that weaves through the woods. Although most of the areas are level, there are a few spots that involve steps or inclines. I believe the walking path is like two miles long. If you take an easy pace, you could spend a couple of delightful hours there. Further south on the island is a small town called Winslow. That's actually where the ferry lands from Seattle. If you follow Winslow Way, you'll pass by the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art, as well as a bunch of boutique shops and restaurants. 
A yummy banh mi was one of the highlights of the trip. For the mixing portion, I used a Princeton Neptune No. 8 round brush. Cobalt turquoise hue is a moderately bright summery color that, while not in my wheelhouse, is very pretty all on its own. But the green and purple mixes you get with this, I'm definitely on board with those. I'm especially attracted to the results I got with Permanent Yellow Deep, Quinacridone Permanent Rose, Quinacridone Violet, and Gold Ochre. Yeah, Puget Sound offers lots of watery opportunities, from Tacoma's Point Defiance Park and Ruston Way, to the Seattle waterfront, to picturesque Port Townsend. Spending a day at Port Townsend is fun, especially if you turn off the main drag and explore some of the side streets where lovely Victorian houses are hidden. I believe their most famous one is the Starrett House that now operates as a bed and breakfast. I've never been inside, but I have been inside Manresa Castle. That one was built in the 1890s as a private residence, but has since been converted to a boutique hotel. It's pretty big and difficult to imagine it was ever a single-family home, but the original resident was a local business bigwig and even the city's first mayor. So I guess if anyone was going to have the biggest house in town, it would be him. I've talked about PNW Waters because those are the most familiar to me. But this cobalt turquoise hue isn't that kind of color. It strikes me as more of a tropical or subtropical shade. So Caribbean or Mexican waters, perhaps. I've never been to those places, so I don't have first-hand experience. But I've watched enough cruising videos to at least pretend to be an expert. Yep. My travel dreams include shrimp tacos in Mazatlan, tamales in Cabo, and ceviche tostadas in Puerto Vallarta. That's right, my travel dreams are also foodie dreams. So my coastal adventures have been limited to local areas. Over the years, producer Mike and I have been to several shoreline spots here in Washington, such as Ocean Shores, Westport, Tacoma's Ruston Way, Gig Harbor, and Port Townsend. We've even been on the water dropping crab traps from a small boat using raw chicken as bait. By the way, that actually works! Who knew crustaceans had a taste for poultry? Although that crab versus eagle video that's been going around is a big clue. Just imagine if crabs were man-eaters. I used to think the worst way to go would be getting eaten by a shark. But now I'm convinced that death by crab would be even worse. Just another thing to keep me up at night. The painting to come sort of reminds me of ocean vegetation. That, in turn, makes me think of seaweeds I've known and loved. First and foremost, roasted nori sheets. Those are what you use to wrap maki rolls. You can also cut the sheets in half to create smaller hand rolls called temaki. But roasted nori also comes in small strips, often seasoned, for quick and easy bite-sized wraps, or even just snacking on their own. I grew up on mom's onigiri, rice balls. Usually she wrapped the balls in a sheet of roasted nori, or just spread miso paste over it. Often there was a surprise inside. Sometimes it was umeboshi, a pickled plum, or bonito flakes mixed with soy sauce. 
kombu is a kelp that's somewhat thick and tough, so it's mostly used to flavor soup stocks, such as dashi. Wakame is a seaweed that's often added to ramen, udon, and miso soups. There are other forms of edible seaweed, but this is the extent of my experience. I need to refill my mug of tea, so I'll play some pleasantly bland music here. Back in a few minutes. For the painting portion, I decided to use only two brushes, a mottler and a dagger, both from Princeton's Aqua Elite series. The idea was partly to showcase the interesting lines you can get with the dagger brush, but mostly it was just an exercise in abstractism. My first impulse was to have the fronds reaching upward. But my inner subversive said, Nah, this is better. Of course, I could just flip it around at any time to suit my mood. Even sideways could work, yeah? I get the feeling that if I painted more florals, I'd likely get more use out of this dagger. As it is, although I really like the marks it makes, it's only an occasional use brush. Let me know if you have a dagger and how you use it so I can steal, I mean, borrow your ideas. In these paintings, I use some of the color combinations on my newly created mixing chart. This time, the background wash was simply cobalt turquoise U all on its own, and I'm sure you can recognize the purples and greens from the facing page. At least I hope so, because I can't remember what colors I used. Hey, it takes a lot of concentration to get those swatches in their proper boxes. By the time I got around to painting, my brain was fried... In the end, even with multicolored splatter, the piece just didn't seem finished. So I added a loose border, and that helped loads. I'm happy to share this experiment in color. It's not every day you get to see this sort of thing, whether it's realistic, cartoonish, or abstracty. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one doing it. And if I'm wrong, direct me to the others. Because if ever there was a need for people to find each other, it's for the seaweed painters of YouTube. Until next time, stay fronzy, my friends. <laughs>